uh, indications of uh, percutaneous endoscopic lumbar decompression because you don't do disectomy. So I changed lumbar decompression. Uh, open disectomy is a discectomy, laminectomy, but endoscopic surgery is minimal decompression. If you did open lumbar discectomy for your wife, you may remove too much of a nucleus pulposus. You may make massive defect in annulus fibrosus. So your, your family or your patient can confront the risk of spinal instability and 70% of patients who underwent open disectomy suffered from chronic back pain more than 10 years. Open the discectomy uh, related retraction nerve injury too. It may develop a few surgery later. So this is open discectomy. The whole dis discectomy was done and the huge uh, annular defect developed. This height was collapsed. But endoscopic surgery is a minimax procedure. You do only minimal intervention, but effect is maximal, better than open surgery, because you don't dissect muscle. You don't remove facet. You don't retract nerve. It's a targeted pathology lesion only could be removed. Indication of PLD for beginner was just to contain the disc herniation. Uh, and uh, the, all, everybody knew nucleotome and the intradiscal decompression indication was just a more leg pain than back pain. We can extend the indication of endoscopic surgery because Endoscopy is a very advanced now, high resoluted working channel scope, so you can see more better than uh, your naked eye. It's a, you can see very clearly all the surrounding anatomic structures. And the side of firing hormone legs is very safe and delicate. It's a, the depth is only 0 0.5 millimeter. And it's very safe only under irrigation. That's why you need irrigation. Uh, but irrigation pressure uh, could be reduced when your patient complain neck pain. You ask, just ask again and again, uh, do you feel neck pain? Uh, but uh, mostly, 99% of patients never experienced the neck pain uh, during, because of intracranial high pressure. Side of firing, Hormonal lady is very important to ablate the second ligament problem in foramen and uh, autopite to uh, treat spinal stenosis. And uh, we develop endoscopic drill point, endoscopic punch. And most of important thing is you got now bleeding control, no bleeding anymore because there are bipolar coagulate. It works in the saline solution. So now indication expanded uh, for experienced doctors. You can treat extruded, migrated, and discretory disc. Non-condensed disc herniation could be treated by endoscopic technique. And you can treat stenosis, disc and facesis, spondylolisthesis, And you can treat also failed back surgery syndrome. After fusion surgery, you can treat the same neighbor. It does not work. Uh, the intraminal PLD is a paramedian approach. Uh, it's like a microscopic disectomy. Uh, but uh, I recommend intraminal approach only L5S1. At level L5S1 is uh, safe. But the other level, 3, 4, 4, 5, you need some disectomy. You need some injury to the facet joint. And uh, you, your patient may suffer from epidural breathing. 
But L5S1 is uh, very uh, safe and uh, very large canal. And if your patient have high iliac crest and the sequestrated herniation and the recurrence and the cyst of the uh, you need uh, the intraminal PLD. The patient in prone positions, you can put serially uh, the cannula uh, to the, so you can remove the fragment without injured annulus. So you can see the post-operative MR this is just intraannual herniotomy. We, we never invade the intradiscal tissue. So this is not discectomy. We preserve totally the uh, disc. Just to remove the fragment. That's a very important message to everybody. This uh, ruptured uh, big herniation disc came safely removed. We preserve the whole structures. You don't need laminectomy. You can see uh, whole structure is normal. So some other orthopedic surgeon who know only open discectomy with the uh, criticize this is uh, not surgery. This is a uh, fraud because no no cutting, no laminectomy. Uh, all the ligamental problem is the same. Just the spontaneous healing but it was actual uh, endoscopic surgery. So uh, uh, there are many uh, patients with a discal cyst. Uh, this discal cyst very safely re removed this technique. And this patient uh, uh, is a politician. He has no time at all. He suddenly developed uh, left leg weakness due to this huge mass. It's a facet cyst. This patient is a parliamentary leader, so he go back same day to the parliament because it's minimal invasive, maximal effect surgery. This was reported to endoscopic spinal surgery Indication of a transforaminal PLD is a protruded disc, extraforaminal disc. You can treat the recurrent disc also, and the migrated the disc nation. And the, the new developing is you can treat back pain only, this technique. If your patient have back pain, don't do open discectomy, do endoscopic treatment. Then back pain improve because it's intraannular sub subligamentous atrophy. So your anger is intraannulus, not intradiscal. So it can treat the free nerve ending. It can kill the pain fiber. So uh, no, no more back pain after surgery. Also, th this laser can release annular anchorage. So side firing laser is very uh, good uh, a platus. You can see just a treat this uh, herniated mass, a huge central herniation, immediate post op you can see it's intraannular, subligamentous approach. It's not intradiscal approach. It never goes inside. 18 months later, uh, this young boy, 23 old man, is a completely normal person. No back pain. So he can do any kind of heavy sports. So we can make people with back pain and leg pain to be normal, active person. Don't use open surgery anymore. Uh, and we can treat recurrent discarnation. And uh, uh, this is a discal cyst. This is discal cyst, uh, also transformer PLD, uh, and uh, you can treat also huge extruded disc. But uh, uh, I repeated the message: 
the whole disk cushion is preserved. The end plate and the nucleus purpose is never invaded. Just inside uh, annulus, we treat them. The annulus recovers again, so no recurrence. And you, but you need some uh, bone job to expand the foramen to approach the outward migration. So through the foramenal process, we can approach here. This is a post of, and five years later, still the patient maintained this height, and still uh, no instability developed. And you need also foramenal prosty uh, for exergy rupture the migrate the herniation upward. You can do that uh, at the level of f 5 s one as well. So uh, this is the one example of intraannular subligamentous herniotomy for the 47-year-old. But if your patient have a downward migration, uh, sometimes you need contralateral approach. You can approach contralaterally to there. And uh, uh, this downward fragment in the foramen, so help us we did uh, contralateral approach. Uh, we reported a uh, transformer approach, uh, endospec spinal surgery. Indications of a foraminal PLD is foraminal discarnation, foraminal stenosis, lateral st recessive stenosis, and uh, many, many, many patients with paled back surgery syndrome after flip, flip, you can treat uh, this uh, patient with a foraminal PLD. Uh, for example, uh, this patient uh, did uh, open surgery, uh, but uh, there is a foraminal stenosis, and the lateral recessed stenosis is a failed back surgery syndrome. You can treat this patient. And uh, this patient also did uh, L45 fusion surgery. So three, four rebels developed uh, foraminal stenosis. So I call it... Uh, and the three, four rebel was decompressed before, but we can treat uh, this uh, failed back surgery patient with the endoscopic approach. You can see complete decompression of foramen and the ganglion get free. And the foramenal stenosis, of course, you can treat. Uh, foramenal stenosis, L5, uh, S1 rebel. This patient uh, had uh, double lesion, uh, facet cyst, and the lateral stenosis. So you can drill first the drilling of a superior facet here, then you can decompress the foramen and uh, the uh, facet cyst. Lateral recessive spinal stenosis can be uh, treated. Uh, th so this patient is 74 year old. He cannot work. Uh, he always work uh, with a uh, with a wheelchair, so nobody treat him. So he had a spinal injection more than ten times. Helplessly, we did uh, right side first. Next day we decompress next left side, so he can work very well now. So this uh, surgery is good for the uh, 80s, 90s, 70s. There are many foraminal stenosis and lateral stenosis. So we can decompress there with uh, under local anesthesia. Or indication of foraminal and uh, extra foraminal herniation, transiliac PLD. The advantage of PLD is a uh, quick rehabilitation. It has uh, no cutting of annulus, no disectomy, just a herniatomy. So we can preserve a whole interversible disc uh, height. So your angle should be less than 15 degree, like this, 15 degree. So uh, this patient is a minister. He, he travel all over the world. So one hour later, he can work again. 
So because we remove only disc fragment, we preserve a whole structures, a disc lamina facet joint, and the, the healing uh, defect of uh, annulus healing and uh, annuloplasty with the radio frequency or laser is needed to treat uh, back pain. So I recently reported uh, the detail of how to do intra-annular subligamentous hernia not go to epidural space. If you go to epidural space, it's like open surgery, it's a uh, breathing. So intraannular ligamentous herniotomy uh, is the, the answer of a new frontier. So this was also reported endoscopic spinal surgery. Conclusion, endoscopic spinal surgery achieve early return to work by minimal invasive intervention. Your patient become normal person. Thank you very much. <laughs>